Blessed be God of Israel who was and is and is to come. To God be the glory, great things he has done and greater things he will do. It's another brand new day, the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome you wherever you are joining us from. Uh, on Periscope, on YouTube, on Facebook, you are welcome in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How are you all doing? I believe you all are doing well and you are also keeping safe. Well, we may not understand the times that we are in, but one thing we know, the Bible says in the book of Second Timothy, the foundation of God standeth sure. So let's rejoice because his foundation stands sure. Welcome once again. This is Pray the Word Ministries, a prayer center in the heart of the community, a place where we pray the heart of the Father. And this is our online Sunday fellowship. Uh, for some times we've just been coming together to pray. Uh, praying the word of God into reality concerning every uncertainty because we are living in a time that we don't know what is what. Yes, we can wake up tomorrow now and you hear another wave from so-so-so place of COVID-19 is also on the rising. But regardless of what that is, there is one thing that is certain. David said, One thing have I desire, and that will I seek after, to behold your beauty, to behold your glory, to be in your presence. So whatever the situation is, it is in the presence of God that we have the fullness of joy. And when we stay in that presence, we will not lose our joy. So I want to encourage each and every one of you. What is that making noise? I want to encourage each and every one of us that if there is any time to be in the presence of God, please, not because of COVID-19, this is the time. Every time is the time to be in the presence of the Lord. But if you have been doing one step in, one step out, if I have been doing cold today, hot tomorrow, this is the time to make that decision and say, I'm going all the way. I'm going to be all the way for Christ Jesus. I will stand to declare all the way for Christ Jesus. I will shout on the mountain in the valley over the sea and everywhere, that Christ is my Lord and my Savior. So, if there is any time, this is the time. We see that the apostles, in the time that they also face their own uncertainty, one of their prayers is, Lord, give us the boldness to be able to declare undiluted word, to speak the name of Jesus in places that matter. And we see that the Bible says God grant them that uh, uh, boldness. And while they speak, God was backing his word in their life. And I pray for each and every one of us that the way God back his word in the life of the first set of the disciple, we will also experience the same thing. But we've got to live like they have also lived. They were all the way for Christ Jesus. They refused to compromise the truth in the face of opposition, in the face of affliction, in the face of famine. When you go to the book of Romans, it says, what is it that shall separate us from the love of Christ? So that is the ultimate right now. So we want to continue praying we want to continue. Last week, we were in the book of um, uh, Second, Second uh, Kings, chapter 6. So we want to continue. We want to continue. That's where we, <clears throat> that's where we stopped last week. But 
before we continue, the Bible says, enter his gate with thanksgiving and enter his court with praise. So everyone under the sound of my voice, let us begin to praise the name that is higher than any other name. Let us acknowledge the presence and the goodness and the greatness of God day by day. Let us give him all the praise. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So right now, enter his gate with thanksgiving and enter his court with praise. So let's begin to praise the Lord. The Father, we thank you. We honor you. We exalt the name that is higher than any other name. If you don't have any reason to praise him, there is one cogent reason that we need to praise God all the time. And that is the death of the Son of the Most High gave us that redemption and reconciliation back to the Father. And that is the ultimate. That is more than enough that when we wake up every day we continue to praise him for that the lord the death of your son remove the gap and build that mighty bridge between me and my heavenly father and that's why when jesus said uh, jesus was asked teach us how to pray he started by saying when you pray say our father so he has become our father again there is no more bridge between us so we have direct access to him to say my father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name so this is the work that christ had to sacrifice himself for that you can live in the presence of the father that i can also live in the presence of my father so for this we ought to praise him the father we thank you we praise your holy name. We magnify your goodness. We, we magnify you for you are a good God. We, we understand that that which you did on the cross gave us that reconciliation. And so for this, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful, O Lord. We thank you because your words are yea and amen. We thank you because of the love that we cannot quantify. We thank you because we enjoy your goodness every day. We thank you because of your amazing grace that you deliver unto us every day we thank you because of your steadfastness of of, of of goodness and love that we experience every day for this we are grateful and so we bow before your throne and we declare you are worthy to be praised O lord Worthy is the Lamb that take it away the sins of the world. You alone, you are worthy. Who is like unto you? You are mightier than the mightiest. You humbled yourself. You became a wanderer on the face of the earth for the sake of somebody like me, for the sake of you that you are on the other side or other end listening and watching. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? The book of Psalms says, what is man that you, Jehovah, you are mindful of him. So for this we ought to acknowledge that lord you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be praised for there is none like you you are the beginning and the end you are the first and the last don't forget he says enter his gate with thanksgiving and enter his court with praise so so begin to open your mouth and acknowledge give him that honor that lord i thank you for all that you have done for all that you are doing for the ones that you are doing that doesn't even make sense to me for the ones that you have done that I can't even see the blueprint already. I can't even see it. So for, for that, you are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. Thank you because your word became flesh and dwell among us. Thank you because your word is powerful. Your word is life. Your words are yea and amen. Oh, I beg of you to give him all the glory right now. I beg of you to say thank you from the depth of your heart. I beg of you, look, for this very present time that we are on the face of the earth, I, I, I call it time of uncertainty. So I want you to give him all the glory because he says all things work together for the good of them that love the lord so he's still gonna make this to work for our good it may not make sense right now the same way when joseph was sold into slavery it doesn't make sense to joseph but at the end 
product of it, which be Joseph coming out as a prime minister. So for this, we ought to give God the glory. We ought to give him all the praise. We ought to praise him because that which he has started is the only one that's got the power, the enablement and the grace and the ability and the capability to bring it to fulfillment, into reality. So for this, you ought to praise him because he's seated upon, he is God all by himself, sitting upon the throne in heaven and the heart. The Bible says he's his full stool. And then we sing, he's got the whole world in his hand. So give him all the praise, give him all the glory for there is none like him. There is none. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. The wonder was that is and that is to come. Ancient of day. The magnificent God. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. We praise your name. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful because you alone, you are God. Thank you for the work of the redemption that you, you sought it out for the sake of mankind. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. People of God, let's go back into the book of um, into the book of uh, Second King. I welcome you once again, everybody on Facebook. <coughs> Excuse me. On Periscope and also on YouTube, wherever you are joining us from. Thank you for spending this uh, quality time together in the presence of the Lord. So let's go back into the book of 2 King chapter 6. 2 King chapter 6. And what is our prayer today? Our prayer still continue where we stopped last week. So when we go to, let, let me first of all read, let me first of all read the book of 2 King. From verse 8. From verse 8. When the king, 2 King chapter 6, from verse 8. Are we there? 2 King chapter 6, from verse 8. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he will confer with his officers. I'm reading the New Living Translation, by the way. He will confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. And one of the prayer we were able to establish, the kingdom of darkness is always mobilizing. They always mobilize. They don't give up. They, don't, they are never tired. They are never weary. And that's why the Bible says you as a child of God put on the whole armor of God. So every time you are also prepared, every time, every, look, as long as you are on the face of the earth, you are meant to be prepared because the devil will always bring war to the doorstep of every child of God. That is certain. You don't need to do anything wrong. If you are a child of God, expect that the kingdom of darkness will bring battle to you all the time. They are never tired. When you go to the book of Matthew and you go to the book of Luke and Mark, you will see that the Bible says the devil tempted Jesus and after he failed, he left Jesus for a period of time. That shows he's going to come back. For the Bible to say Jesus was left for a while. He's definitely going to come back. So we see that in the, in the scripture in verse 8, the king of Aram, not because of any dispute, the Bible says he just launched an attack. He wants to expand his territory. So likewise, the kingdom of darkness also loves to expand their territory every day. But I pray that every power of the kingdom of darkness that wants to expand their territory over that which God has given to you shall surely fail in the name of Jesus. And this is one of the reasons we need to stand firm in him. And I made it known to us that in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. So it's about living in the word of God. It's about waking up in the word of God. It's about eating in the word of God. Everything we do is a lifestyle 
of the word of God. And when we live according to the word of God, the word of God will be the one to sure answer for us day by day. So let's read further. The Bible says, verse uh, verse 9 now, but immediately Elisha, the man of God, will warn the king. And today, we, we may not have the prophet that is warning us every day. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have that warning too every blessed day. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But the thing about you and I is, we certainly don't yield to the Holy Spirit. That's the issue with us. We love to go according to the flesh all the time. because The Bible says the flesh and the spirit, they always wage war. So, you as an individual, you need to subdue the flesh so that the power of the Holy Spirit take over and it will begin to lead. Now, I will give you an example. After the baptism of Christ Jesus, the Bible says he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. When you go back to the book of uh, Exodus, you will see how God led his own children into the wilderness. But today, when we see wilderness, we begin to say to fear qua. Oh, I reject it in Jesus' name. I bind you, Satan, uh, that wants to lead me into the wilderness. I bind you, I bind you. But meanwhile, it is God that is leading us into the wilderness. Wilderness is not a terrible place, but that will be for another day. So here we see that God was giving the prophet the strategy of the uh, 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 king that he he strategized in the secrecy. So one of your prayers should be every hidden secret of the kingdom of darkness concerning my life, concerning my home, be revealed in the name of Jesus. Let it be an all in the name of Jesus. May that plan in their secret place not come to reality over me as a child of God in the name of Jesus. When you go to the book of Micah, Micah chapter 2, he says, what to them that devise iniquity in their bed in the night and when the morning is come they practice it so god has already put a a, a woe upon every hidden power of the kingdom of darkness and that they prepare or, uh, or or strategize in the night in the in the power of darkness so that when it is daybreak we begin to see the manifestation and the bible says woe to them so they always plan in the night and or in the dark and when the reality of day dawn we begin to see the manifestation this is one of the reason again the bible says we need to put on the whole armor of god so we are always <clears throat> on the alert we are not sleeping like the disciple and jesus said you couldn't even watch for me for one hour and i love the book of abacook he says i will stand upon my watch So that shows Abacook is going to be watching. He says, whatever he says is what I'm going to be running with. People of God, are you with me? Am I communicating this scripture to you? Because we pray today and most of the time the Bible says we pray and miss. And that's why many of us don't get the answer to our prayer. But when we go according to the mind of God and pray, the Bible says when you pray according to his will, he answers, he hears us, he answers us. So let's go further. The Bible says, verse 9, but immediately Elisha, the man of God, will warn the king. And we also see that the king was yielding to the warning. So you also need to pray spirit of obedience garment of obedience in the name of jesus god said through samuel to saul obedience is better than sacrifice elijah was warning the king the king was yielding to the warning the king embraced the warning when paul was to go and preach somewhere he says the holy spirit forbid me 
the Holy Spirit forbid me to go. But come to think about it, Paul was going to go and preach. Did the word of God not say, go ye into all the world? and preach the gospel. So that was exactly what Paul was going to go and do. But he says, the spirit of the Most High forbid me. And it didn't go in that direction. And maybe a few days later or after, he saw in a vision or a dream that come over to Macedonia and help us. And getting to Macedonia is like the fertile ground that God has already prepared. And after sowing the seed of the word of God into that ground, he was yielding hundredfold and many more. And this happens to be the church of the Most High, the church of God that through them, God was able to empower uh, Paul to do many other activities in the kingdom. So, let's read further. Verse, verse 8. Do not go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops. So, God is always going ahead, warning us as a child of God that turn right, turn left. And I also established that for you in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 2. The Bible says the children of Israel, they have stayed too long on this mountain. And God said, turn ye to the left hand side. Turn ye to the right hand side. So, they receive a specific direction so when we go by the leading of the holy spirit we also have direction for example when you go to the book of genesis isaac was going to go in the footstep of his father because of famine the bible says isaac was already planning to go to egypt and the 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 lord came he said don't go to egypt like your father did stay in this land for here so and i'm going to multiply and Isaac gave to the uh, gave himself to the word of the Most High, and you know the result of the story. The Bible says he sowed in the land, and he was reaping hundredfold to the point that he said, "Now the Lord has made room for us; we shall be fruitful in the land." People of God, I'm taking us somewhere. These are all recap. These are all the recap. So by the time we get to verse eleven. The king of Aram became very upset over this. So as a child of God, we are also in the position to upset the kingdom of God. When I mean the kingdom of darkness, when we yield to the word of God, we will be that man or that woman that is upsetting the kingdom of darkness every day. Because the yielding of the king to the prophetic warning the king of Aram became very upset over this. Because every plan of the king of Aram is an all. The guy was just failing on every direction, in every way he was failing. So I pray that the kingdom of darkness will sure fail over you in the name of Jesus. But, oh, you can say amen ten times and resounding amen with fire, but the point is obeying the word of God, obeying the scripture, being led by the Holy Spirit. Let's go further. We have 10 more seconds. By the time we get to uh, verse 12, they made it known to the king. It is not any one of us, my Lord, because the king was angry and he believed maybe one of his uh, 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 soldiers at it was a traitor. So they made it known that, no, there is a prophet in that land. There is a man of God in that land. There is a child of God in that land that is upsetting the plan and frustrating the plan of the kingdom of darkness. I pray you be the one in the name of Jesus. I pray I'll be the one that is upsetting and frustrating the plan of the kingdom of darkness day by day. Because one of the things you need to know, the plan of the kingdom of darkness is not just to aim for one child of God. When you go back to this scripture here, the plan of the king of Aram is to take captivity of Israel, to take them in, to put them into captivity. So they are not aiming for one man. 
And when you look at every plan of the kingdom of darkness from Genesis, we thought that uh, in the beginning he aimed for Adam. No, the Bible says by one man sin came into the world. So he wasn't aiming for one man. When you look at how the uh, devil terrorized Job, you will see that in the life of Job, he never aimed for Job alone. So the devil doesn't aim for one man. When it was the days of the apostle, he wasn't just aiming for Peter. He wasn't just aiming for Paul. He was aiming for all the child of God. That We see that even Stephen, that wasn't an apostle, he was just one of the deacons that was ordained to serve table. Let's call him waiter in the house of the Lord, to wait on to table, to give food, to distribute food. So he's just the storekeeper to be able to distribute food. We see how Stephen was brutally murdered in the open. So the devil doesn't just aim for one child of God. Let us get this into our system. Let us get it into our heart. That look, you might think the devil is only aiming for you. Umba, the devil is not just aiming for you. The kingdom of darkness is not just aiming for you. It's not just aiming for me. But I pray that wherever they mobilize, in their kingdom of darkness, they are standing in the dark that, yes, they will mobilize in so and so and so place. Because of you, they shall surely fail in the name of Jesus. By God, they shall fail in the name of Jesus. I say, by God, they shall fail in the name of Jesus. This is one of the reasons that you see David always seeking the face of God. Should I go after this battle? What strategy do you want me to use? And we see God saying, this is what I want you to do. This is what I don't want you to do. Being led by the Spirit of the Most High. Let's read further. By the time we get to verse 13, I'm taking us somewhere. We have 10 more seconds to go. By the time we get to verse 13, the king now made a decree that since it is one man that is revealing our plan, let us go for that one man. Have you heard of the saying, cut off the head of the snake and what happened to the rest of the snake? That's au revoir hasta la vista common tapetu. Have you heard the saying, once you arrest, arrest the commanding officer of the, of the battalion or the army, the rest of the army, they will not be mobilized anymore. Once you cut off the head, that's au revoir. And that's why the word of God in the book of Genesis says, the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the snake, which is au revoir, he's going to sort it out. So let's go further. Go, verse 13, go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. Now, a man of God is revealing your activities in your secrecy. You still have the God to go after that one man of God to seize him. If that man is revealing your activity, did he not going to see this? Will God not give that same man the grace to see this, that yes, they are coming to arrest me. They are coming to seize me. Is he not going to see Are you seeing what I'm seeing? So, by, by verse 15, this is where we are going. Verse 15, when the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Verse 16. Don't be afraid. That's the first word. Don't be what? Don't be afraid. So in this time of uncertainty, what is the first watch word for you as a child of God? Do not be afraid. Many of us, when we enter into this pandemic, what is the first thing that first of all sees our life? Fear. 
and if you are still entertaining fear, this is the time to begin to delete every fear in your bones, in your marrow, in the name of Jesus. How? Why? The word of God said, yes, you may see the host of armies around you that you can't do anything about in the physical you may see that the pandemic is everywhere and you do not have the power in the physical, but yet the word of God still says, don't be afraid. So I lose every fear in the name of Jesus. You spirit of fear that has taken over me from the from March last year. I'm, I, I only know about United Kingdom because that's when we enter into the face of the pandemic severely, that the whole country had to be shut down. Until now, we are still in one shutdown or lockdown or the other. And a lot of people are living in fear. Fear, fear. When you live in fear, doubt is going to be the king. When you live in fear, doubt will also be your chief. So, doubt is the king, doubt is the chief. So, what kind of advice do you expect from doubt the king or doubt the fear? What will they be feeding each other? So, right now in the next 10 seconds, Father, I embrace your word. I refuse to live in fear in the name of Jesus. Your word says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So I lose every garment that fear has used to, 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 to take over my life. I consume the garment of fear in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the in the resurrection, fear, hear the word of the Most High. I delete you from my domain in the name of Jesus. I send you out of my domain in the name of Jesus. I decapitate the power of fear, the seed of fear in the name of Jesus over my home, over my house, over that which God has given to me. I annul every language of fear in the name of Jesus. You will not come to pass in the name of Jesus for there is a name that is higher than any other name and at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. So I stand on the word of God the word of God says, I should not be afraid. And this is one of the reasons I said to you, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So unless you keep hearing the word of God and feed yourself with the word of God, fear is going to take over. And once fear take over, whatever the word of God has built before, the first assignment of fear is to destroy all the foundation and erect his own foundation. So the foundation in your life will become that foundation of fear. And everything, every time you will hear the language of fear, but right now it can be overturned. It can be overruled because there is a name that is higher than any other name. The same thing Jesus said to the disciple, be not afraid. When they saw the storm, they saw all sorts and they said, be, Jesus said, don't be afraid. Don't be, he used that same word. Like the prophet is speaking to his servant right now. Every power of fear I lose over my home. Every power of fear I I, 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 I cast you out of my domain in the name of Jesus. I stand on the word of God that says, don't be afraid. I embrace the word of God that says, don't be afraid. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I begin to live on the word of God. I destroy the foundation that fear has built and I begin to erect a new foundation with the word of God that says, do not be afraid. I refuse to live in the power and the shackles of fear in the name of Jesus because there is a name that prevail over the affairs of man. There is a name that is higher than any other name and at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue 
declared that Christ Jesus is Lord. Every seed of fear, every root of fear, I uproot in the name of Jesus. I began to uproot the seed. I began to uproot the uh, root in the name of Jesus. I destroy the stem of fear. Every branches of fear I destroy in the name of Jesus. I embrace the word of God. I receive boldness through the word of God. I receive courage through the word of God. I receive strength through the word of God in the name of Jesus. For the word of God are yea and amen. I receive boldness and courage and, and strength in the name of Jesus to march forward in this very time of uncertainty in the name of Jesus. I will know no defeat in the name of Jesus. I will know no fear. You have no power to defeat me. You have been defeated on the cross of Calvary. Jesus said, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your power? Oh, Father, we thank you for overturning this. Hey. And so I stand on that which has already been accomplished for me. In the name of Jesus, I soak myself hey, with the garment hey, of, of Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, garment of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, garment of boldness. In the name of Jesus. So I remove every garment of fear. I destroy the power of fear. Every Everything that fear has established, I began to destroy. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I embrace the word of the Most High. 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 I speak with boldness through the word of the Most High. The fear, your time is up in my domain. Out of my domain in the name of Jesus. Out of my life in the name of Jesus. Out of my marrow. Out of my uh, my bones, my flesh, my blood. In the name of Jesus. Your time is up by the power that is in the blood of Jesus, by the power of resurrection. Above all, I have a name that is higher than any other name. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, it is written every knee shall bow. So I call on the name that is higher than any other name. And that is the name of Jesus. I began to declare the name of Jesus. I began to declare the name of Jesus. I began to declare the name of Jesus. I declare the name of Jesus. I declare the name of Jesus. So you power of fear, you cannot stand the name of Jesus. So your time is up out of my domain. Oh, the door is open right now out of my domain in the name of Jesus. The door is open out of my domain. I cast you out. I bind your activity in the name of Jesus. I bind every activities of fear by the power that is in the blood of Jesus, by the power of resurrection, because there is a name that prevails. There is a name that is higher than any other name. So you power of fear Oh, everything that you have done is now overturned. It's overruled by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. So out in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Look at the language of the man of God to the servant. He says, verse, verse, verse 16. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him. Yes, you can see it, but nevertheless, don't be afraid. Don't let fear rob you of that which God has already done. Don't let fear put you in a shell or a cage because that's not the plan of God. That's not the way of God. So Elisha speak the mind of God to this young chap, the servant, don't be afraid. And that's the word that I want you to hold on to. In this period of uncertainty, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You can see how I'm repeating it. Don't be afraid. You can see how I'm laying emphasis on it. Don't be afraid. Begin to tell yourself, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't, be afraid. don't be afraid. Mention your name. Don't be afraid. The book of Timothy says we have not received the spirit of fear, but of sonship. We have not received the spirit of timidity, but of power. Oh, so people of God, you are the one with the power. That's why the book of uh, Psalm, Psalm 27, one of my favorite scripture, he says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He says, when the enemies, when the wicked and my foes, they come up to eat up my flesh. He says, they stumble. 
He did not say they will. He said they stumbled in the past and fell. Though the host will rise against me, he says, in this I will have confidence. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If there is anything you need to lose right now is what? Fear, fear, fear. Lose the grip of fear. Shake up the power of fear and begin to walk in boldness. Look at what the scripture says. Look at it. Verse, verse uh, 16. Look at it. He says, 16, don't be afraid for there is more on our side than on theirs. We are talking of God of more than. God of more than. God of more than. What your eyes can see. What your imagination can imagine. God of more than. He says, for there is more on our side than on their side. So if the soldiers are 10 million that has come to capture one man on the side of God, which is the side of the servant of the Most High, the prophet, is God. 10 billion. So tell me, how can the host of this world uh, subdue the host of heaven? Impossicant. There is more on our side than this. There is more on our side than this. This is the assurance of the word of the Most High. There is more in this period of uncertainty. There is God of more than on your side than whatever you can see. More than. More than. To whom who is able to do more exceedingly abundantly. Isn't that what the scripture says? So we are talking of God of more than, more than. There is more on our side than this. There is more on our side than this. There is more on your side as a child of God. I want you to see this right now that you are with the God of more than. The same God that says, I will give the angel charge over you. The same God that says, look, what is this man that you are mindful of him? You have created him a little lower than the angel. Yet you have crowned him with glory and honor. More than, more than. There is more than. There is more on our side than their side. So we are talking of two sides now. When you go, you know what? Let's quickly go to the book of Revelation. Let me show you so that you know that there is more. Let's go to the book of Revelation quickly. We have 10 seconds. I think I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. I'm going to quickly start from the beginning. I'm going to start from the beginning. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 star. And she's been with child cried, travailing in bath and in pain to be delivered. And there appear another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. Now, first and foremost, look at where I'm reading. The first sign and the first thing you see, and there appear what? A great wonder. So, which one would you prefer? A great wonder or another wonder? One, we have an adjective. A, a, a word that describes the kind of wonder. Another wonder and a great wonder. Which one will you prefer? The Bible says, a great wonder in heaven. And then, in that same heaven, we have another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. Having what? Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And he still drew to the third part of the star of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, when you read further, you will see verse 7. And there was war in heaven. 
Michael and his angel fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angel. And verse 8. Now, this is where I'm taking us into verse 8 of the book of Revelation chapter 12. And prevail not. Did you see that? And prevail not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So, the first victory and the ultimate victory was established in heaven by God. So, we are now talking of that same God of more than. So, the servant of the Lord here by the name Elisha is telling the servant there is more on our side. So, here we see that yes, there was war. So, but the God of more than prevail. The devil and his angel did not prevail. So, the one with the great wonder prevail. Another wonder, their place was no longer found. Hallelujah to the glory of God the Father. People of God, we're going to stop here. We will continue this next week by the grace of God. But I want you to know that you are serving or you are on the side of God of more than. Are you with me? So which side are you? Let me know. I am on the side of God of more than. The God of more than. More than what my eyes can see. More than what my headquarter can imagine. Go, more than what my ability can conceive. More than, more than, more than, more than. That's the God that we are serving. But before we get to that, the word of the most high to the servant through the prophet is, don't be afraid. When you go to the book of Exodus, you know what? Let's quickly go there. Ah, Let's go to the book of Exodus. This is God that gave deliverance to the children of the Most High by Red Sea. Are you with me? Let's go to uh, Exodus 14. And I'm reading verse 13. Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. What was the first thing? They saw uncertainty before them. So what was the first thing that God gave Moses to say to his children? Don't be afraid. Fear ye not. Don't be afraid because the God of more than is on your side. More than what you can see, the host of Pharaoh and the chariot and the horses. I want to stop here. I'm talking to you today about God of more than. God of more than. And I pray that it will come through for you in every way, shape or form in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for seeing your word. And we declare that the power of fear failed and all. We uproot the seed and the root of fear in our lives today. So as to enjoy the God of more than that your name be glorified. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. People of God, I want to thank you for being a partaker of this 10 seconds prayer. Uh, by the grace of God, we're going to continue next week. I have not finished in this book of uh, uh, X, uh, sorry, Second King chapter 6. Today, we are able to establish the God of more than that is on your side, that is on my side. So, I beg of you, lose the garment of fear, uproot the seed of fear, uproot the root of fear, cut off every branches of fear. Don't leave any of the branches. Let's go with the God of more than, more than, more than. God of more than, more than. They that are with us is more than theirs. God of more than. It's a prayer we're going to continue next week by the grace of God. Thank you. 
people of God on Periscope. Thank you, people of God on on uh, Facebook. Thank you, people of God on on uh, YouTube. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. I don't know what you are going through and I may never know what you are going through. But I want to plead with you. I want to beg you. As you go through, don't stop because you are still going through. So don't stop. Keep going and pray through. Have a wonderful day, morning or evening, wherever you are joining us from.